Hey, this is Joe Gray Bench Electronics. Welcome back to the Pedal Teardown Series where I take apart new and interesting pedals and show you what's going on inside. Today we have the 10 Years is a Decade. All right, so here is the 10 Years is a Decade pedal, very popular pedal right now. Uh, it's either called that or the 10 Years pedal. It's not entirely clear. Uh, you can go and look and search like 10 Years of Pedal and you can find a website where you can order it. It's not clear what the brand name is versus the pedal name, but it's called the 10 Years Pedal or 10 Years of Decade Pedal. It is a clone of the PV Decade Amp. We'll talk about that in a second, or at least a preamp from that amp. Before we get too deep into the pedal, I want to give a shout out to Devin, who sent me this pedal from their personal collection. Devin owns a coffee roastery in Louisiana, and they were nice enough to send me this pedal. So if you're interested in getting some coffee, go check out lumacoffeeroasters.com and buy yourself some coffee. I don't drink coffee, but it smells, it smells really good, so... Go check them out. So like I said, the 10 years pedal here is a at least alleged clone of the preamp from a PV Decade practice amp. It's a tiny little like 10 watt, all solid state, single transistor output, so like single ended solid state practice amp. Super cheap, pretty much not notable in any way, except that in an interview in I think 2020, the lead singer of Queens of Stone Age named Josh Ohms said that that Decade amp was a big part of the Queens of the Stone Age sound. Pretty much overnight, the price of those amps skyrocketed from like well sub $100 up to hundreds and hundreds, probably even thousands of dollars for certain models. So yeah, that's pretty much why this pedal exists. In combination with the uh, lead singer or just the person, St. Vincent, whose name is Annie Clark, reached out to the person who makes this pedal, whose name is Gus Pancakes, to recreate the PV Decade preamp in a pedal. So that's really why this pedal exists is because St. Vincent asked Gus Pancakes. There's a lot of names, it's all a bit confusing. The pedal here is the pedal obviously, 1590 BB size enclosure, pink powder coat. We'll get to that in a second. There's a box here that Devin was kind enough to send along with the pedal. Inside it's got this kind of neat little way of doing product information. So it's sort of like a trading card in a um, one of these like semi-hard um, protective cases. And on the back here, it's like an old baseball trading card. Um, but it gives you information about the pedal. So it tells you 9 to 18 volts, center negative, uh, 18 volts for higher headroom, 9 volts for more compression. It lists some of the acts that have been using the pedal. So St. Vincent's there, Paramore, Beck, Young the Giant, War on Drugs, Vampire Weekend. So there's some, there's some names there. It gives some specs about the pedal over here. Height, 4.6 inches. So that's the the length of the enclosure. Born 19, or 19. Born 2021, August 3rd, 2021. So presumably when they put out the pedal. Uh, Los Angeles, California. So yeah, and there's Gus Pancakes. That's the person that actually makes the pedal. There's also some other goodies in the box, like some stickers and pins and whatnot. So the actual pedal here, like I said, 1590BB, pink powder coat, top mounted, quarter inch input and output jacks and DC jack. Like the little spec sheet said, it can run anywhere from nine to 18 volts. So we're hoping to find at least 35 volt rated capacitors inside. 10 years logo in the sort of typical 80s PV spiky font, five millimeter red LED indication. The knobs here are the Davies 1400 style knobs. There's a switch here that says saturation or normal. It has a little rubber cover over top. Pretty standard feeling latching three pull double throw foot switch so probably not relay switching that appears to be it for the externals of the pedal let's go ahead and crack it open all right so here is the interior of the 10 years is a decade pedal so starting with the components we have the switchcraft number 11 uh, mono open frame jacks there is no battery here so we don't need a stereo jack to do any turning on or off of the one side of the battery, so that's fine. The potentiometers down here, they do appear to be the Tata branded potentiometers. The two we can see are both linear 10Ks. That's the pre and post potentiometers there, controls. DC jack is a standard 2.1 millimeter internal nut Kobecon style DC jack. As far as resistors, we have metal film quarter watt resistors. We've got a bank of standard 4148 diodes. There is a little Zener diode over here, which we'll talk about in a second. A polarity protection diode over here and then a couple of the MLCC, the multi-layer ceramic capacitors, and then some film capacitors. For active components, there is a 4558 dual op amp and two transistors. The top transistor here is a 2N3904 MPN BJT, and the lower transistor here is a BS170 MOSFET. Foot switch is one of the Gorva light green foot switches. 
electrolytics are all uh, Nichicon electrolytics. As far as voltages, as we saw on the top of the pedal, this pedal is rated to take up to 18 volts, which you want to see at least double the voltage in terms of um, component tolerance. So all the film caps and the ceramic caps, those are going to be at least 50 volts. These say 100 volts, so that's fine there. The electrolytics, uh, most of them are 50 volts, which is good. The uh, the one here, the 220, is a 10 volt, so most likely that's going to be somewhere guaranteed to have lower voltage in the circuit. Um, so as far as voltage ratings, all good. A quick note on the PCB design. So obviously it's very aesthetically pleasing. We have all the resistors, or at least most of the resistors, in a nice line. Then all the diodes, all the uh, ceramic capa capacitors, all the film capacitors, everything's laid out very neatly. It's very aesthetically pleasing. Unfortunately, when you do this, that usually causes you to have to make compromises in terms of like good PCB design rules. So it's a bit hard to see, but there's areas like over here, over here, down here, where you have traces running very close to each other, parallel to each other. Ideally, if you want to have traces come in close proximity with each other, they should meet at right angles. Uh, but when you are forced to put components in a specific place on the board for aesthetic reasons, you might have to, like I said, you might have to compromise on some of that. Not saying it's good or bad. Um, it obviously looks nice, and when people open up the pedal, it makes them feel good to see something that looks like it's made really well. And construction-wise, it is made really well. Everything's soldered well. There's a little bit of flux on the board, but as long as it's no clean flux or non-acidic flux, that's fine. And it looks like a professionally made product. Um, like I said, sometimes there's compromises that have to be made to, um, to make that happen. And in order to maximize your adherence to those like PCB design properties, you probably can't end up with a perfectly clean look like this. But to be fair, of course, these are guitar pedals. They're not satellites. They're not rockets or life-saving medical equipment. So that's a decision that each PCB designer has to make for themselves. I'm not telling you what you should do. Um, but either way, it looks cool inside. And um, that's definitely part of the battle. So we talked about the two uh, pre and post potential values. I did open this up off camera very carefully. Uh, you know, it's not my pedal, so I don't want to desolder or anything. The, but I did confirm the tone control values. So we have low, mid, high. The low or base control is a linear 250K. The mid control is a linear 50K. And the treble control is a linear 250K. So that's about all there is to see inside the pedal. Let's have a quick look at the PV Decade schematic. So here's the schematic of the PV Decade. This one was drawn by PV in 1980. Um, so this is the actual amplifier. It's reasonable to assume that the pedal essentially stops here at the master control, which would be most likely the post control. The power supply is going to be very different because we don't need to transform or rectify the incoming power. We're not getting power from the wall. We're getting it from a DC power supply. Um, so there isn't going to be a transformer. There's not going to be any rectifier diodes. Some of the stuff over here, like the creation of the half supply voltage with the two 220Ks, that's plausible. Um, you'll notice here, though, that the PV Decade Amp for the preamp is running at 24 volts, where the uh, pedal here is anywhere from 9 to 18 volts. So there's a, <laughs> there's a question here of, like, if we're making an amp in a box pedal, but we don't supply the voltage that the original amp was working, are we really going to be able to recreate that sound? Is that what we're even trying to do? Maybe that doesn't matter. Maybe maybe what players are really looking for when they buy this pedal is to get the sound of the amplifier. If that's the case, though, then is it even important to recreate the actual audio circuit? So there's questions to be answered. I'm not going to be the one to answer them because I don't know the answers. It's also questionable, like, even if you were to accurately recreate the circuit and supply it with the power, like, everything's running exactly the same as the original amplifier, you're still taking that pedal and plugging it into a different amp with its own preamp, with its own power amp, with its own speakers. There's no guarantee that even if you get all this right, it's still going to sound like the original amplifier played through a different amp. So, so yeah, there's, there's questions to be answered with amp in the box pedals, and um, I don't have the answers. So just my little rant on that. The, the extra part here that's not included in the pedal, this is the, the, essentially the power amp of this amplifier. It's a single transistor, so single-ended output. Uh, the transistor here is a, a five-pin transistor a 2004, which is a CA2004, RCA CA2004, which was a, a little audio amplifier transistor that was rated for, I think, 12 watts. And they show here driving a 4-ohm load at 10 watts, so that's at least plausible there. As far as the circuit here, we have two input jacks, normal saturation. That is, the switch is at least going to be emulating something akin to why you would use those two jacks is going to be why you would switch it, theoretically. We have our op amp here. There's a lot going on in here. 
Uh, I would have to spend a long time looking at this to really wrap my head around it. The saturation comes in here to the base of a transistor that feeds in here to the feedback loop. There's a lot going on. We do have a set over here of bog standard clipping diodes, anti-parallel clipping diodes, straight to ground right before the master control. The tone stack here is, it starts out kind of fender looking here with the, the slope resistor and the bypass cap going here to the treble control, but then it changes here and it has sort of two uh, individual tails doing mid and bass. The values match up that we observed for the potentiometers, the values match up here with the exception of the bass control, which is a audio taper rather than linear taper that's in the pedal. Not gonna make a huge difference. It's just gonna change the way the pedal or the way the potentiometer functions. The one thing they may stand out, of course, for uh, people who are paying close attention is that we do not see two transistors in this preamp circuit. We just see the one, which is this here, this uh, 3919 NPN. That meshes up well with the 3904 transistor that's in the pedal. But then there's a question of, well, we have this MOSFET in here, what's that doing? Uh, and the answer is, I don't know. Um, I did trace enough around it to see that it's not like polarity protection or, or bypassing or anything like that. It is part of the audio circuit. It could be the case that a little more amplification is needed after these clipping diodes, and maybe it's just doing something there. Um, or it could be a way that the saturation control was, or the saturation input was recreated to create the same effect. Um, but I think it's fair to say just with the inclusion of that transistor that it is not a part-for-part -part clone of a PV decade. There's something else in there that they were trying to do with that MOSFET to perhaps recreate the sound rather than explicitly the circuit. So that is the 10 years is a decade pedal. Let's go ahead and put it back together. All right, that is a wrap on the 10 years is a decade pedal. If you have any questions or recommendations for a pedal you wanna see on an upcoming Teardown episode, let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate you hitting the like button and subscribing. I'm Joe from Great Bench Electronics. Thanks for watching.